provide for you guys and providing content for the Canadians out there. So yeah, keep tuning in. Today we got with me a special guest. He's all over the globe. He's currently in France. Today we got with me Catherine Liu. How are you doing bro? I'm good, I'm good. Thanks for having me. No worries, no worries. So um, many people might not know your story, but you know, I'm sure in a few going to be hot property, especially with the national team coming up and their success. Uh, just explain to the people what you do and why you're so good at what you do. <laughs> well, so I'm a, I'm a sports photographer, mainly in football. Um, I like I started kind of in, in 2019 when I was 19 years old. I didn't really have a, a plan. I didn't. I kind of just fell into this role, basically, <clears throat> and jumped into the deep end shooting MLS, uh, the event for Whitecaps. And kind of over time, I've sort of, even though it was kind of an accident I ended up there, I realized that this is what I wanted to do with my career. But like capturing moments and like capturing passion is like, it's it's like the the moment, it's kind of like when in my time that I feel most alive. And yes, and from shooting Whitecaps, I've kind of gone on to shoot everything from, um, Canadian men's national team, uh, CPL, and like Canadian Premier League, and just a bunch of other leagues kind of through that. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. So to get into your occupation or your career, how does that work? It's hard. A lot of people ask me, like I, I, all the time people just DM me on Instagram, hey, how do I, how do I get into sports photography? It's, it's kind of tricky. Mine was completely accidental. Uh, I think a lot of my friends sort of had a similar pathway that I did when we we kind of created our own outlets. So the way I got in was I started, my friend wanted to start a, a soccer news site. I was like, yeah, I'm down. I had, like, I have a camera at home. I could take pictures. And, you know, he just started grinding out articles. And at first I thought I'd also be writing a little bit, but I quickly realized like I'm not, it's not really writing is not my favorite thing to do. Um, <clears throat> but I just kind of kept shooting. So for me, it was just like I have I've I've created this outlet and I so I can get accreditation to games. But that's how I did it. That's how a couple of my friends did, but it's like not the only way at all. It's definitely the most complicated way to do it, but they're like tons of photographers who just started shooting from the stands they wouldn't necessarily try to get action shots they'd try to capture the atmosphere the environment from their perspective some would start with uh <clears throat> shooting their local high school team their local college team just amateur teams and sort of you know kind of getting clients through there saying going to local clubs and saying hey i could shoot this for a hundred dollars and kind of you keep moving up like that. That's how like a lot of photographers have done it. It's not an it's not like a one path sort of thing. It's really like kind of whatever comes, you just have to take your opportunities, basically. Understood, understood. Um I'm guessing you're a big fan of football because you chose that specific, you know, lane to go uh shoot pictures in. Uh, what where did it start and what did it stem from? What was your upbringing in football and how mm. does that relate to <clears throat> taking pictures only in football? Yeah, I was born well, in Canada. Like most people like think, oh, Canada, like it's more of a hockey country, which it is, but hockey's incredibly expensive. So for like, for, like people don't realize it, but soccer, football, I'm just going to bounce between the two, but uh, soccer is the most played sport in the country. Like, 
you like by far because it's it's so accessible there and so everyone at my school is always playing soccer I played it a little bit when I was like I mean like five or six but I didn't really like it that much but I, like going up in elementary school I just I didn't have a lot of friends I had a hard time fitting in in my school and I just I couldn't you know I never felt like I belonged there and I remember when I was 10 years old like one day I just decided I'm gonna go play soccer with all the kids who play soccer and like that I just there's something about the feeling of like just kind of like everyone playing the same thing everyone having the same idea you're you got something to talk about it was like I loved it and that was right around the time uh the world cup was in South Africa so I kind of just it was all perfect timing so my dad is French um he moved he immigrated to Canada in the 90s so he had he obviously has a background in football and so I find it like during the world cup I was you know, following the French national team. My mom is Dutch. I was following the Dutch national team. Um, and I just kind of like fell in love with like the, the energy that happens around the world when the World Cup is on. It's like something that everyone knows that feeling. Even when there's not a game on, everyone knows that like there's something happening. Um, and so like just, you know, from the age of 10 on, I was never a very good player because I kind of started a bit late. But I... I love the sport. I like watching games, everything like that. It was always like I have ADHD. So in school, I could never write a paper on anything, right? Like do a project. But if it was on football, then it would always be like my, I would work my ass off on it because I was learning something. I was passionate about it. And when it came to football, like, and like photographing it, there's like the passion you get in the sport isn't like nothing else. The, the access, like the fans, they're, they're like so passionate about the club, no matter where you are. So kind of being able to capture that and the emotion of the players on the field, it, it was something like, like I knew I had to be here because I like, I also, you know, growing up in Canada, we, like I said, we're not always associated as being like a football country. So when like being able to tell these stories from a Canadian perspective like that for me is like what I'm most excited about because growing up it was never about the Canadian national team I was interested in the Dutch team the French team and now I'm kind of realizing there's so much more to talk about with these smaller countries Canada's one but any small country in the world has such an interesting history and that's something that I sort of want to capture and this is just a perfect time to start uh talking about the Canadian national team but that like really any small nation any like unique story is what I like to sort of capture yeah you've entered the market at the the perfect time you know and of course like you said you know you grew up watching the Dutch and French national teams because of your parents but there was probably not so many role models for you to get involved into Canada Um, growing up do you remember anybody from you know, playing in Canada or playing abroad, who you did um, look up to? You mean like like playing for the Canadian national team or like? Yeah, who were Canadian, who were Canadian specifically. Mm. Um, well, like I said, I started watching around when I was 10 and I didn't really honestly follow the national team until I was maybe 16 or something like that. Pardon me. So I would say... Like any Canadians, there's obviously Dwayne Di Rosario, like who I hear about all the time, but I don't think I ever actually watched a game of his, but I would just hear about him all the time. Um, you know, any guys who played for the Vancouver Whitecaps, because that was my local team. I Before I was shooting, I was like uh, a big fan. I would always go like to every game for a while. And even like before that, I'd always keep track. And so I remember Russell Tybert growing up because uh he scored two goals against the LA Galaxy one time that was one of my first games I I went to in person so for me like Tiber was always someone like growing up who I was a big fan of and then Alfonso Davies obviously during his time in Vancouver just unreal we knew he was going to be good but it's so uh, we're all like everyone in Vancouver is so happy to see what this guy's done everyone has a Fonzie story like they went to high school with him or like they ran into him at this mall and like yeah it's probably like that but from a young age honestly there weren't any I don't remember supporting even following Canadian football until I was I guess 16. Uh, do you have an Alfonso 
Davies' story um, that maybe you heard from somebody else? Um, I'm trying to think. I see. I I'm one of like the few people who never really like. I never ran into him in a mall, or I never, I never like got an autograph at a game or anything like that. From my, I have like a lot of friends. Yeah, who like run into him at like a store and like their grand, they get like a picture with their grandma with him and like stuff like that. Or I yeah, I have a friend who take classes like was at the same high school as he was, and he was just a very nice guy. But. Like ever, it was just sort of a thing. Like everyone in Vancouver had a Fonzie story. <laughs> For more content like this, like, share, and subscribe. Mm-hmm.